So now, now we're going to talk about modified Rodriguez parameters. These are quite popular, used in lots of different areas. Having just gone through Rodriguez, you will see that we can go pretty quickly here. There's one subtle difference, but man, this little difference makes a huge impact on how we can use them. Instead of defining, like CRPs, we had beta i over beta naught. Now we have beta i over 1 plus beta naught. So Warda, she was saying earlier that, well, these went singular if beta naught went to 0. If I have a zero rotation, beta naught is one, so I divide by two, easy. If I have upside down, beta naught goes to zero. I still have one, that's not bad. So for what orientation now will these go singular? Go ahead. When it's ups er, upside down, 180? No, 180 beta naught is zero. Oh, so then 360 when it's like yeah. negative one. Okay, so. So wait a minute, so if I'm telling you this is the inertial frame, this is your body frame, and they're identical, do you have a zero or a 360 rotation? So is the MRP singular or non-singular? If you've done nothing, it would be zero, right? Until you start cycling through. Right, and how do you know it did nothing? All you know is they're identical. So at this instant, is my MRP description singular or non-singular? Singular, because you don't know. Who thinks non-singular? Who thinks singular? Who is confused? <laughs> Honest people. Good. I hope you're a little bit confused. That probably means you're thinking about this and go, wait a minute, what's going on here? This is where it starts to get a little bit weird. But man, it is great. It is really cool how we can take advantage of these things. So as you're very correct at summarizing, you have to know the path. And if they're just identical right now, you get to choose did it do one revolution or not, right? And I typically say no, because who wants to deal with singularities, right? So the singularity has been moved from 180 degrees all the way back to 360, and 360 is the same as the origin, so that should give you a little bit of a headache until you kind of go, wait a minute, okay, it starts to make sense. So now the MRPs are like CRPs. They're a ratio of the quaternion vector part over now one plus the scalar, and that's going to shift things out, and I can go very far in my rotations. In fact, I can do everything except for a complete revolution. Tumbling upside down, no problem. I'm just dividing by one. No big deal. Okay? So let's explore that. As before, there's mappings. This is, goes from quaternions to MRPs. You can inverse this mapping using the quaternion uh, constraint and solve it, and you end up with these formulas. This is one of your homeworks you'll do. Um, deal with this math and algebra. It's just more ways to apply the quaternion constraint. It's, you need to get comfortable with that. So there's nice, elegant quaternion MRP direct mappings. Definitely singular. Every three parameters set by itself has to be singular somewhere. So here it's 360s, and like CRPs, they blow up to infinity. And if you map it back with a little bit of a trig identity, you can prove this now becomes tangent phi over 4. CRPs was tangent phi over 2. So CRPs, we could visualize small angles as being 1, 2, and 3 is your roll, pitch, and yaw angles, essentially, right? This linearizes to angles over 4. So whatever MRPs you have, you multiply times 4, it's roughly that many radians. Now, how good is that approximation? Tangent phi over 4. Let me see. I was going to actually run this. There we go. Tan function. What I want to do is, if you look at the tan function, if I go to, well, Tangent phi over 2, 180 degrees, I'm blowing up, I'm going to infinity. I go off the chart here, right? That's what it acts. But you can see, man, I can be up to almost 50, 60 degrees, and there's barely any distinction between the linearized version, which is tangent x is equal to x, and the actual tangent function. So this gives you a quick visual illustration that the CRPs actually linearize much better than the Euler angles. Euler angle 60 degrees, you better have some higher order terms in there. Um, now, if we go here to tangent phi over 4, look what happens. 
really, I mean, it's almost linear up to 90, 100-ish degrees that you can do. If you're going from zero to 90, 100, that's a huge domain that you can deal in a linear, if you do a linearized analysis, linear feedback gain analysis, which we'll get to, this is actually really valid. And if you exceed that domain, if you look at this curve, piecewise, it's almost straight, right? Yes, it starts to deviate from the blue line, but it's not taking off to infinity at a that crazy, right? So this is how well these things linearize. They're really, really good for large rotations, and the linearized equations are quite representative of the nonlinear response. They're not exact, but you get a very good estimate, which is going to be very, very handy for feedback gain analysis. We can go higher order, actually, with the Cayley transform. I've got whole papers published on this with, with Takis and Junkins on what's called higher order Rodriguez parameters. It turns out we can take these things to a higher order in the Cayley transform, and I can come up with coordinates that are tangent phi over 6, tangent phi over 8. And you could arbitrarily bring this closer and closer, but you're dealing with more and more local singularities as you go to higher stuff. You have six sets of coordinates, but six singular, six singular conditions where you have to keep switching between them, so things get a little bit more, you know. For every gain, there's a price. <laughs> but you can expand this. So here you see the tangent phi over 4 part and what happens there. Okay, and there's also, if you can do the math, there's ways to relate these CRPs to MRPs, and we can go back and forth. So all these Rodriguez tend to have nice, compact, direct relationships. We don't have to go to and from DCMs all the time just to relate one to the other. DCMs work, but it's nice when you've got these really compact, elegant, analytical answers. So modified Rodriguez parameters. We have one plus this. That moves it as far out. One question that often comes up is, well, if you did one, why not put two there? Right? If you had two, two plus beta naught, beta naught between plus minus one, that denominator never hit zero. And there's real reasons for that all of a sudden. You could do that. Then you have a set that never goes singular, but if I give you an attitude in that set, those attitude coordinates can all of a sudden represent two different attitudes. So if I give you an MRP of one, two, three, you wouldn't actually know what the attitude is. There's two possible conditions which is hell <laughs> if you're doing control estimation. There's one is a true attitude and the one is of wrong attitude and you don't know which is which. So that's why one turns out is the best we can do. And you'll see a geometric reason for that shortly as we look at the stereographic projection. So, Lewis, quick question. So it's nice that there's no singularity with those, but is there a way? There is a singularity right now. At 360? At 360, yes. Um, but if you have gone to like 190 degrees and you want to find the short way back to zero for mm -hmm. controlling, it was easy with the Euler parameters because you just yes. take the negative. How do you do it with these? I'll get to that. We're getting there. So this is just different ways to go from a DCM to here. Like with the CRPs, there's some compact formulas. So if you're coding them, but they all will have issues right now if you're doing a 360 rotation. Um, as long as beta naught is not minus one, then you're fine. So this actually works out pretty well to get one of them, the short rotation. In fact, if DCM, as long as you pick the beta naught that is positive, the positive square root of this, you're guaranteed to have the short rotation. So this would actually be a non-singular way to always get the short MRP back. What we will see is there are CRPs were unique. The CRP and the shadow set on that sphere, both those points projected to the same point in the Q space. MRPs, those two points will project to different locations. So there's two possible MRP sets, and they're very equivalent to quaternions. One is short, one is long, right? This math will actually always give you the short one. If you're 180, there's an ambiguity, but pick one. They're both equally good, right? If you're 180 down or left or right, it doesn't really matter. You, but the mathematics work out just fine around that. 